Hello, and thanks for joining me for this topic of how to build your personal brand. I'm Lynn Stokes. I'm a brand strategist and a mixologist, which you'll hear a little bit more about, which is part of my unique personal brand story. And I am very excited to be with you to talk to you about this subject that is near and dear to my heart. I want to give a special thank you to Crystal Reynolds Lewis and Rolling Out and the Sisters with Superpowers team to, for extending me this invitation to share with you a couple of tips and tricks and ideas about building your own personal brand. So let's get started. You are your best thing. This is quote is written by Toni Morrison, the author of Beloved. And I think it's the perfect quote to kick off our time today talking about the personal brand because you are at the center of your personal brand. You are the heart and the soul of your personal brand. And when you think about the 7.9 billion people on this planet, there is no one just like you. It is amazing how with so many people on this planet, you are the only person that is you. Yes, there may be other people that do the same things that you do. They live in the same city where you live, but there is something special and unique and memorable about each of us that makes us unique and makes us ourselves. And that idea, that identity, that is central and center to building your own personal brand and creating the identity that you want others to know about you. And so that's what we're going to talk about because you are your best thing. So for today's discussion, I will introduce myself to you, tell you a little bit about my journey and my story. We're going to talk about why personal branding. If you're um, noticing on social media, there's a lot of talk and discussion about personal branding and building your personal branding brand and what it means and what it doesn't mean and what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So I'm hoping that we can debunk some of those myths, set the record straight and cut through a little bit of the clutter so that you'll find it easy to start going down the path of building your own personal brand. And we'll do that by building your personal BFF. And I'm not talking about best friends forever, that BFF, but what I've kind of have my little secret cheat sheet and my code to an easy way to get started on building your own personal brand. So with that, please feel free to grab notes, make some notes, grab some paper, um, take some screenshots and feel free to tag me on social media at the Lynn Stokes, T-H-E-L-Y-N-N-E-S-T-O-K-E-S and would love for you to join and follow along and um, enjoy this, this, this topic and this information. So let's go. A little bit about myself. I really believe probably like many of you that I am the product and I am my ancestors wildest dreams. I was born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. So I am from the uh, bluegrass state, uh, the state that gives us Churchill Downs and the Kentucky Derby and uh, was a great place to grow up and live and still have family in Kentucky and was fortunate from an educational standpoint to have a mechanical engineering degree and also an MBA in marketing. And so I pride myself on having a little bit of the left brain action and the right brain action and being a creative analytical thinker, if you will. Um, I have a corporate career. I've spent over 20 years in corporate America working at some of America's, if not the world's, most loved consumer product brands. I started my career in product development at Ford Motor Company in Detroit, Michigan, and then uh, made a shift to marketing and have spent uh, the majority of my career in brand management roles, product innovation roles, and uh, marketing strategy roles. So I've worked at Tropicana Products, the Orange Juice Company. I was on the brand management team for Pure Premium. Uh, worked at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Another stint back at Tropicana under PepsiCo where I led their product innovation marketing and then spent the majority of my career at public supermarkets. 
So for any of you all that are from the Southeast, live in the Southeast, or ever ventured to probably Florida for a spring break or a summer vacation, you're probably familiar with public supermarkets and dare I say those public subs. And I'm proud to say that for four years, I was the brand marketing manager for the deli and had a lot of fun doing strategy work, uh, developing creative and any customer facing communications had to come across my desk. Um, Loved all of my time in Florida, but had a unique opportunity to work for Krispy Kreme with their marketing and launch a consumer packaged goods for Krispy Kreme. So moved to Charlotte, North Carolina in 2019, and that is where I reside today. So as wonderful as all of that is, as far as being, you know, the product of your ancestors' wildest dreams, there came a time where I was like, hmm, maybe it's time for me to chase a few dreams of my own. So in 2021, I left Krispy Kreme and left corporate America. Uh, like so many people, the pandemic made everyone reevaluate the things that were important. What are you doing with your life? Uh, getting to mid midlife and thinking, hmm, is this what I want to do? Are there some things that I want to do on my own? And uh, in 2022, I started my own organization, Stokes Unlimited LLC and really focus under two brands, if you will, um, that I'm developing with my own organization. So uh, from a personal brand standpoint, I'm taking all those years of brand management and marketing strategy and doing personal branding, working with people like you for uh, individuals, professionals, entrepreneurs, uh, maybe those that are early in their career, but also a lot of people at midlife that have a significant time in adulting, if you will, and helping them develop their personal brand uh, for what they can do to attract ideal opportunities and for their next chapter of their life. And then also doing marketing strategy work for businesses. And then the other part of my business and brand is Quench Academy. That is a brand where I focus on reimagining happy hours that educate, motivate, and celebrate around a central topic and theme because I'm also a mixologist. So several years ago, I went through this kind of phase where it was like, hmm, I wanna do something different. I wanted, the marketing is great. I was active in my community and doing things, but there was always kind of a curiosity about um, wanting to do something a little bit more formal with my mixology. I was kind of the person that would always kind of tinker in the kitchen and make drinks and beverages for the get togethers and the parties that me and my husband might host. And so I went to bartending school and so had a great time. Wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it. Really just wanted to kind of learn a little bit more about formalizing my education, my craft around mixology and had a great time with it. And once people found out that I went to bartending school, then around my local network, I started doing hosting tastings. I started doing a couple of classes as far as teaching people how to make drinks. And then uh, when the pandemic hit, people were looking for virtual activities for team building and that type of thing. And so I ended up formalizing it to Quench Academy, where I offer classes that use mixology around as a base to teach people about how to make drinks, how to uh, educate across topics. So it's great for corporate groups and casual groups. And so I'm a marketer on the Lynn Stokes side and I'm a mixologist on the Quench Academy side. So that's a little bit about my personal and unique brand story. So what is personal branding? Personal branding is the ongoing process of creating an identity for yourself as an individual. And I highlight ongoing because personal branding is not a one and done type of activity. Um, if you think back to yourself and your own journey, where you were, say, five years from five years ago and where you are now, you might be in a totally different place and probably are in a totally different place. Things that were important to you then may not be as important now, or you might been in an early phase of something that now you're further along in that journey. And so I like to think that personal branding is not a one and done. It's not something that you do at one time, but it's an ongoing process and an evolution of who you are and the identity that you're creating and changing and evolving over time and sharing that with your network and the people around you. 
So who needs a personal brand? I believe that everyone needs a personal brand, especially once you get to adulthood. So if you're a college student, if you're a graduate student, a professional early on in their career, um, midlife, entrepreneur, solopreneur, business owner, I think that a personal brand is for everyone. And whether you realize it or not, you already have a personal brand. So there are, and what that really means is that when someone says your name, when someone sees something about you, there is an image in their head. There are characteristics that they think about when they think about you. And so the beauty of a personal brand is that you get to craft and control that narrative versus having others do it for you. So if you're gonna have a personal brand anyway, I believe that you should be in charge and be intentional about what that personal brand is. So what does that mean? What is part of a personal brand? It's the messaging. It is knowing that when you think about you, when you think about Lynn Stokes, that you're going to be thinking about, oh, she's the one that does marketing and mixology. So her messaging, and usually if I go to her channels, if I'm talking to her, I can expect her to tell me something about marketing, about strategy, about personal branding, about how to make a great margarita, about the tools that you need to set up your great bar, that that messaging that Lynn's going to tell me is going to probably be around marketing and mixology. And so that's part of her personal brand. And it also includes a look and a feel. So there are colors associated with a brand. There may be a logo, there may be fonts, and that's how you put yourself maybe online. But even if you're not online, there is a look and a feel that maybe is part of your unique style. Maybe it's the way you dress. Maybe it's the color makeup you wear. Maybe it's the way you cut your hair. But all of that contributes to your personal brand and what makes you unique. And then finally, your personal brand includes your presence. And I say online and offline because I want to make a point that personal branding does not mean that you're going to, you know, try to be some social media influencer. I believe that even people that don't have a presence on social media don't want a presence on social media still have a presence that they can have offline. If you're in a corporate setting and you're working, it can be your presence as far as how you handle yourself in meetings how you hold meetings, how you email your team, and how you show up in those communities at work still contributes to your personal brand. So we've talked about why, but what are some of the benefits of having a personal brand? Why would I wanna do this? What can I expect to gain from this? Well, I think there's four key areas that you can benefit from having a strong personal brand. The first is differentiation. You can stand out by highlighting the skills and experiences that make you unique and memorable. I'm not sure how many people that you know that have had a career for over 20 years in marketing and also are a mixologist. That makes me stand out among my peers that might be marketers. It makes me stand out among my peers that might be mixologists. That is that personal brand is that Whatever it is that you hang your hat on is what makes you unique and memorable and stand out in the crowd. The second benefit is the opportunities that personal branding affords. It gives you an advantage in having doors and windows open, open to new people, new jobs, and business. By having a personal brand, you have something that you can go out and tell people and talk about that can open up new doors, but in like manner, it gives the opportunity that when people know what you stand for and they know your personal brand, you become attractive. So therefore, those opportunities, those people, those jobs, that business, it comes to you. Thirdly, it is a benefit of trust. You know, in business, it is an old saying, and it's totally true, that people do business with people that they know, they like, and they trust. And so by building a personal brand, by having the reputation of your brand, people are going to know who you are, they're going to know what you value, and they're going to respect your expertise, which goes back to those opportunities that will find themselves and find their way to you because people trust and know that you are the right person that is the answer to their problem. 
that you are the person that is going to give you give them the information that they need. And then finally, the fourth benefit for a personal brand is control. In this digital age, and I know I'm not the only one, the first places people search for people are on Google and on social media. So when you meet somebody new and you're having a conversation with them and it may be the first time that you're interacting, once you get away from them, nine times out of 10, you're gonna put their name in Google. You're gonna search for them on social media just to see what else can I find out about this person? What else is out there? And by having a strong personal brand, by putting yourself out into the world and putting yourself on social media, you can control what is being said. You can present yourself in the best view possible. And as a tip, I would uh, encourage everyone to just Google your name and see what's out there. If do you have a website? Do you have a social media presence? Do those come up? Or are there other things that show up when you do a Google search on yourself? in other pictures and other images that you didn't place, but it's out there on the internet for all to see. And isn't it a better place if you can control that narrative about what's being said? So we've talked about why have a personal brand, the benefits of a personal brand, who needs a personal brand, everyone, but that feels like a lot. So where do you start? And this is where the BFF comes into play. So I am pleased to present your personal BFF. And in this case, what I have crafted is the personal brand foundation framework. That's your BFF. And it's made of four simple pillars to help craft the foundation for building your personal brand. And that is brand clarity, brand confidence, brand commitment, and brand consistency. So grab a pen and paper or grab some notes and let's get started. So clarity. That's the start of your brand foundation. This is what you do. This is what you're going to be known for. This is the thing that for me, it's marketing and mixology. And how do you go about this? Because I hear from a lot of people that I work with is that I can do so many things. How do I know what it is that I do? So what I would want you to do is do this exercise, identify items, and we're going to write down a list and no more than 10 and 10 may seem like a lot to some people, but for others, they'll get to 10 quickly. But these items among all your brand assets and the things that you do need to be things that one, you have significant knowledge and or experience with. The first place to start with that is really your job. What is it that you're doing 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week? you likely have significant knowledge, you have plenty of time in it, and that's usually a good place to start of one of the things that could be the basis for your brand. Two, what are items that you can write or speak about with little to no preparation? So if there are topics and they may be what you do from a work standpoint, it may be something that is a hobby or a love, but it's something that you could immediately start talking about it. You could write about it with no trouble and no issue. Put that on the list. Number three, what are the things that others come to you with questions about, or they ask for your feedback, or they compliment on you do that so well? When other people notice it, write that down because a lot of times other people see things in us before we see it in ourselves, but put those things on the list. And then finally, and probably most importantly, what are the things that ignite your passion, your energy, and your joy? This is your personal brand. This is what you're gonna be known for. This is what people will associate with you. And so you want it to do something that is energy giving and not energy draining. So if it's something that gets you excited and your face lights up, you know, there are things that we do that when we talk about it with our friends and family, you know, we hang our head and we're not really excited about it. But then there's other topics where you start talking about it and the people around you, they say things like, wow, Lynn, you're so excited. Your whole face changed when you started talking about that. Put those on the list. So this is the list to help you determine what it is that you do and what you want to be known for. If you're stuck, I have a little treat for you. If you go to lynnstokes.com, there'll be a pop-up 
and you can download a little cheat sheet that I call 101 personal brand thought starters that range in everything from professional, financial, your home life, relationships, and um, lifestyle and hobbies to help kind of spur the thinking of what could be on this list to be the foundation to give you clarity on what it is that you do and what you wanna build your personal brand on. Now, refine that list and prioritize your list in rank order. And then the top one, two, or three items are the foundation for your personal brand. Now, there are a lot of people that say that for a personal brand, you need to have one thing. I don't subscribe to that. I think that especially the longer that you live, the more lived experiences that you have, I think it's hard to just kind of envelop yourself in one thing that, you know, why do I want to narrow myself in one thing when I can do many? So I think that it's fair and it's safe. And plus from the standpoint, because you are a whole being to take your top one to three items and let those be the foundation for your personal brand. So you don't have to have one thing or do you? You kind of do. Because I kind of look at this as the brand clarity equation, that one plus one equals one. So you don't have to have one thing, but there should be one thing that ties everything that you do together. A few weeks ago, I wrote a LinkedIn post that now currently has probably over 53,000 views. And I said in that post basically that Rihanna can be a singer and give us all things Fenty. Lizzo can play the flute and be a body positivity advocate. Serena can win 23 Grand Slam champions and also be a venture capitalist. And Mother Oprah can own a media empire and also Weight Watchers. So if these women can do more than one thing, then you can too. You can be an HR professional and an event planner. You can be a financial advisor and a DJ. I can be a mixologist and a marketer. But I think that you don't have to narrow yourself into one thing, but there should be a thread. There's something about you that ties all of that together. So we use those four women as an example of what their one plus one equals one. Then I would say that Rihanna is a singer and Fenty Beauty, but I think her other, those equal no limits. We all know that Rihanna is a mother. She's, she crushed it at the Super Bowl halftime show. There is nothing that she can't do or is not interested in doing. So Rihanna represents no limits. Lizzo, as far as playing the flute, being body positivity advocate, her one that ties everything together is being you, your authentic self. I think she even has a song that says you're special. That is her message, no matter what she does. Serena, as far as being one of the goats, as far as the being the goat from a tennis standpoint and a venture capitalist, I think her kind of headline would be that hard work pays off. You do the work, you, you do the practice, you play tennis and you win the Grand Slam champions, but also you have an idea and she wants to feed into that idea from a venture capitalist standpoint that that work, that sweat, it does pay off. And finally, Oprah Winfrey, representing a media empire and Weight Watchers, she's all about inspiration and all of us living our best life. So for me, my marketing and mixology, what ties those together? I'm also a storyteller. I like looking at the things around me and telling stories and using those as analogies to how to simplify how we live our life and taking stories to illustrate the points of maybe more complex subjects. So you don't have to have one thing, but there should be one thing that ties everything that you do together. The second C and the second pillar of our BFF is confidence and why do you do what you do? So in this case, you have to say what qualifies. So for the one, two or three things that are gonna be the basis of your personal brand, what qualifies you to be the person that others will come to because of it. And I think that it can be in a couple of different areas. It can be the education. So look and see what you went to school for. Look and see what are you doing any kind of extra training for? How much time have you done and spent in some of the things that you're doing? And realize that time doesn't necessarily mean that you have had to do years and years of time doing it. 
I think that time could also be if you're starting something new, if you're curious about a hobby, that can still be the basis of your personal brand, even if you have no time with it, because even if you're acting on it and say, hey, I'm going to learn how to sew and I'm going to take everyone with me. My time in sewing may be new, but the fact that I'm a newbie at it makes you interesting to people that have a curiosity about it, but may not have started yet. So conversely, in life with that is experience. So there is, I, I, I don't subscribe that you have to be an expert in something from a personal branding standpoint. I think from an experience standpoint, wherever you are in that spectrum, as long there is somebody that is one step behind you, two steps behind you, think about you a year ago. Those are the people that you're going to be talking to. So wherever you are on the experience spectrum, it is valuable because there is somebody that is two or three steps behind that would love to know and take advantage of your knowledge. The testimonials, we talked on the clarity as far as like, what are other people saying? When people give you a compliment, and what areas are that? Can you write those down? Can you capture? Can you share those testimonials? Because those help to give you confidence on why you do what you do. Content, for any of my people that are writers, that are bloggers, that have social media uh, accounts, what are the types of things that you're writing about, that you are blogging about, blogging about, video, taking videos of? That is the content and that qualifies you to talk about, to be about, to establish those things as your personal brand. And finally, any accolades that you may have received. If you have received awards or commendations, certificates, trophies for any of the things that you're doing, those are confidence boosters to support why you do the things that you do. Now, beware, because there's a certain note that I've had people that I've worked with that talk about, Lynn, I don't know what to do. I don't know what, what it is that I'm doing. And I always kind of dig a little bit deeper because nine times out of 10, they know what their top one, two or three things are, but their clarity problem is really a confidence issue. So I don't take this for, this is an exercise that I encourage my, my clients to do is that when you identify clarity and you identify those brand anchors, that for each one of them, what are the confidence points? And don't minimize that. You know, a lot of times people may have trouble with, you know, self-promotion or it feels like it's bragging, but I think that you also have to establish the authority that, yes, listen to me, I'm interested in this, I'm passionate about this, I have experience in this, because it's important to share your authority, your authenticity, and your approachability. So watch out for those clarity problems because it may be a confidence issue. And you've got this, you've done the work, you've got the time, you have other people that have said you're good at it. So live it, believe it and own it. The third C is commitment. And this is who do you do what you do for. In other words, in marketing speak, we're talking about our target audience. So you have to identify for the things that you do who is the ideal person to be on the receiving end of it? So of course there's demographics, the things that we can qualify. So if you are talking to a specific age group, gender, education level, income level, relationship status, profession, all of those are demographics and you should have a good grasp on who are those people and what do they look like and where do they live and what is their lifestyle and their hobbies and things that they do that are going to connect with who you are and what your personal brand stands for. Secondly, what are their desires and aspiration? What is their desired future? So where are they now and what is their desired future? And where are their dreams and their goals and how can you help with where you are on your personal brand journey for what you represent to help them get to that desired future. And finally, what are their pain points and their challenges? What do they struggle with? What is preventing them from achieving their goals? And how can you, with your personal brand and your knowledge and your expertise, share with them to motivate them, to encourage them and to educate them to reach those goals, to diminish those pain points and get to their desired future state? So that is the commitment of who you do it for. And I think that one of the challenges that a lot of people have when it comes to commitment 
is that, especially when you can do many things, you may build your brand on two or three things, but then because people know, well, she also does this, and I know that she's done this, they'll come to you and they'll ask you, can you do this for me? And while the answer may be, yes, I can, the other issue is that, is it draining? Should you? So I also really can't underestimate the part of stressing the commitment of who do you do that which you do for, because it's too easy to go left, to go right, to have other things come. And I know that I'm not alone in finding myself saying yes to some activities that yes, I can do it, but I'm not having fun doing it, or I'm not making money doing it, or I'm not getting anything out of it. And it's also keeping me from doing the things that I really want to uh, build my personal brand on, the things that give me joy and that fill me up. So beware and be on the lookout for the commitment issues and making sure that you have defined your audience, who you do the things you do for, and staying true to that. And then finally, let's look at consistency, the fourth C of the BFF. And this is how do you do it? So you have to identify the key messages that you want to communicate that are associated with each of the brand clarity pillars that you have defined for your personal brand. What are those values and characteristics? I think it's important that from a messaging standpoint, if authenticity is important to you, if freedom is important to you, that should come across in your messaging. Your tone and brand personality, very important because that speaks to how you do what you do. Are you formal? Are you informal? Are you playful? Do you like to use humor? How do you want to come across with your message? Are you spontaneous? Are you professional? All of those things should be part of you and how you deliver the message, which keeps you different and unique from those around you. Thirdly, from a consistency standpoint, what is your value proposition, your offer, your framework? So whether you want to monetize your brand, uh, your personal brand or not, there is something about, do you have a framework for what you do? For me, when I'm working with any one of my clients, any of my clients, we're going to probably start and finish with my personal BFF, brand foundation framework. We're going to talk about your, the clarity, your uh, confidence level, your commitment to what you do and consistency. That is my framework. That is my offer. If we work together one-on-one -on -one or in a group, we're going to go through that. So I think it's important from a personal brand for however it is that you do what you do, if you're a baker, that you have a framework for how you identify with your audience. If you're baking cakes or baked goods that you sell, what is that process and being consistent with it? Now, the next one, as far as a content strategy, I do believe in the importance of putting yourself out. We live in a virtual world now. We can make connections with people, not necessarily the next city over, but we can make connections with people on the other side of the world. And so I do believe that being having an online presence is important and therefore you need a content strategy. If you are just starting out on this journey, or even if you've been on this journey, there are people that would make you believe that you have to be on every single platform. You have to do all the things and spend all the time making videos, editing videos, taking selfies, taking photos, doing all the things. I really believe when you're starting out that you should focus on one to two content types on one to two platforms. I'm, you know, for me in my journey, I tend to focus on LinkedIn and Instagram. Yes, I have accounts on Facebook. I have a TikTok account but I'm focused, most of my activity is on LinkedIn and then secondarily Instagram. And I focus on one to two content types right now. I do text posts on LinkedIn and photo posts on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. So I think that it's important for you to be where you are, start where you are and then grow as needed. You may have to do some iterations, you may have to change, but I wanna give you permission Choose one or two platforms and one or two content types and be consistent with that message. Now, consistency doesn't mean, doesn't have to mean every day or multiple times per day as far as posting. If you can be consistent twice a week, three times a week, once a week, whatever that looks like for you, be consistent on that platform in that content type and give yourself permission and grace to do that and do it with excellence. And then finally, a visibility strategy. 
So part of building a personal brand is establishing your identity for others to know. And that has to be done by other people knowing and seeing you in action. Uh, so recommend doing podcasts, whether you want to start your own podcast or being a guest on a podcast, a summit or a conference, an activity like this. Writing, if writing is your style, then you can write as far as creating your own blogs or being a guest blogger, speaking in collaborations. So think about how do you want to have be visible to other people and use other people's audiences to help communicate your personal brand message. So looking at all of this, your personal BFF, which is your brand foundation framework, we talked about brand clarity, which is as far as what is it that you do, brand confidence, why do you do what you do, your commitment to your brand or your people that who is it that you do what you do for, and then finally, consistency, how you do what you do. So I truly believe to get ready for the transformation. If you build your personal brand, if you focus on your personal brand, you will have a strong foundation that will attract the ideal opportunities to you instead of you having to go and find them. You get the benefit of having a focused brand story. So that sets you apart from the competition. It makes you unique. It makes you memorable. It differentiates yourself in a crowded field of people vying for each other's attention. And then finally, that transformation of going from confused, I don't know what to do, to conquered, I got this, in your thinking, your messaging, your branding, and your identity for who you are, what you're about, and who are you here to serve. So get ready for the transformation that happens when you build your personal brand. I, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it has sparked something within you that you are your best thing and how to build your personal brand. Uh, follow me on socials at The Lynn Stokes or at Quinch Academy for my mixology adventures. Feel free to drop me a line at hello at lynnstokes.com or visit lynnstokes.com. But I am so excited and great that you have stood, hang, hung in there with me. And I hope that this has been helpful and I'm cheering you on. Feel free to reach out and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.